So today at Southview, we are celebrating communion together. And what I want to do online is I want to invite you into that as well. We're going to be looking at one of Paul's letters to the followers of Jesus who lived in a place called Corinth. We know that as the book of 1 Corinthians. And in chapter 11, the Apostle Paul is writing to them about what we're going to do today. It's about communion. So if you look in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, he says this, In the following instructions, I do not commend you. I don't commend you. I'm not, I'm not clapping you on the back here. I'm not saying way to go. Because when you come together, it's not for the better, but for the worse. For in the first place, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you. And I believe it, in part. Be, for, for there must be factions among you in order that those who are genuine among you may be recognized. When you come together, it's not the Lord's Supper. It's not communion that you eat. For in eating, each one goes ahead with his own meal. So one goes hungry and another gets drunk. What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I commend you in this? No, I will not, says Paul. What's going on? Well, in the early church, they would gather together, right? Just like we do. But they would gather together in homes, in, in these small house churches. And in the house churches, they would teach like we do. They would worship. They would sing together like we do. They would pray together like we do. And they would have communion, right? Also called the Lord's Supper. And they would celebrate that because this was something that Jesus had passed down. Jesus had given them as a way to remember the sacrifice that he was making on our behalf. And so they got into a habit, into a rhythm of, of regularly celebrating that. But as is often the case, when you do something too often, it begins to lose some of its meaning. This is one of the reasons why we don't celebrate this weekly or even monthly here at Southview. I want this to retain a sense of awe, a sense of power, a sense of meaning for every one of us. And so we do it irregularly. We do it in a way that I hope will help us remember what it means. Now, what, what's going on in Corinth is that they have lost the awe. They have lost the sense of purpose and meaning that was supposed to be attached to what was a very special celebration. And what would happen is the church would gather together and, and they would begin to celebrate, but, but some would eat, neat, 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 and there would be none left for others. Some would drink and drink and there would be none left for others. They weren't being considerate. They weren't thinking of one another. They weren't loving one another like Jesus taught. They were, they were doing something else. And church had become an opportunity to focus on themselves. And this celebration was just a part of that. Paul hears about this and he writes this letter. He's like, what are you doing? You're missing the whole point. You're missing what this is supposed to be about. In verse 23, he goes on, he says, for I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed, the night he was arrested, the night before he was crucified, when he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death. Until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then. And so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. That's why many of you are weak and ill and some have died. But if we judged ourselves truly, we would not be judged. But when we're judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. What's Paul saying? He's saying, remember what this is about. Remember the night that Jesus instituted this. They were around the Passover table celebrating that meal that they had celebrated going back to Moses. The Passover meal to commemorate, to celebrate 
God's deliverance of the people of Israel from slavery in Egypt. And as they told the story every year, every element, every food on the table, every glass of wine meant something. And it was part of telling the story. They would take the bitter herbs and they would say the slavery in Egypt was so bitter. It was like these bitter herbs and they would take and they would eat and they were so bitter. And that's, that's like the bitterness of slavery that our people experienced. So every food on the table was part of telling the story. And it was at the end of that story that Jesus instituted a new part, a new section of the Passover meal. They'd never heard it before. He took the bread and he broke it and he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. This is a sacrifice that I'm making for you to pay the price of sin for you so that you can come home. He took the cup of wine and and he said, this is my blood. This is the covenant, the new covenant that I'm making for you because you matter, because I love you this much. I'm making this sacrifice for you. Paul wanted these believers in Corinth to understand this, to remember what they are doing, that they are remembering the death and the sacrifice of Jesus, proclaiming the power of his death and looking forward to when he comes again. Now today, we're going to celebrate this together. And wherever you are, you can celebrate this with us. I would ask that you have something to drink and something to eat. It doesn't have to be a cracker. It doesn't have to be juice. It could be anything because this is a symbol, right? There's nothing magical or powerful in the elements themselves. This is a symbol to help us remember what Jesus did for us. And we're going to do this together. So take your elements and we're going to celebrate this together. We take the cracker, right? Or we take the bread or whatever you have. And we remember when Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body. It's broken for you. This is the sacrifice that I'm making for you. And it's going to be costly and it's going to be painful. And I'm doing it because you matter this much. I'm doing it because I love you this much. And I want you to come home. I want you to experience life with me. Life now and forever. We take the bread and we remember that. We proclaim the power of his death and resurrection until he comes. Then we take the cup. And we remember that night that Jesus took the cup and he said, this is my blood. This is the new covenant that I'm making. The new covenant that I'm making for you because you matter, because I love you. Because I want you to come home. I want you to experience life with me now and forever. And so every time we take the cup, we remember that. That we are proclaiming the power of his death and his resurrection until he comes. My friends, every time we celebrate communion, it's a special moment. And the beauty and the power of the gospel is that no matter where you are, no matter where you've been, And no matter what you've done, you have a heavenly father who loves you. And this, these elements, these are a symbol. These are a picture of how much he loves you. My prayer for you today is that you would experience that in a fresh way. As we begin this year together, as we begin 2022, may we look forward understanding that as our foundational base. And living out in that reality a life that reflects the love of our Heavenly Father. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, may today we rest in our assurance of your love. As we move into this new year, may we live in assurance of your love. 
but may it not stop with us. I pray that we would not simply be repositories of your love, but that we would be conduits of it. That your love would flow to us and through us to those around us. And as we do that, may we proclaim the power of your death and your resurrection, your love, until you come. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.